We're back on it. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, technical. Wednesday, we spoke a little bit about strength, but that's not just getting physically stronger so you can rip your walls down and your banisters down with the stretch cords. It's just more, I like actually the word endurance, but you know, people see strength and they want to really get involved. But endurance, repeating the same movements over and over again. If that technique falls apart the least, you will continue swimming faster for longer. Good work, everyone. Okay, coming up on halfway during this warm up four minutes, we're on the long cords, we're making our front crawl position work, whether you are pulling them horizontally or whether you are pulling them vertically. If you can mount them from above, so they literally just dangle down here, okay? Babak, I'm not sure where you've got yours, okay? But if you can mount them vertically, you can get a nice, catch position and you can get the hips involved you can actually sort of swim whereas if i'm pivoted at halfway and the arms are pulling this way i don't get the rotation in through the hips doesn't matter for today but just for the future just for the future something to consider okay good work tracy yours look much better now except for obviously when you let go of them and they ping up to the top of your marquee there <laughs> I wonder if we'll see Charles today coming to the rescue. Please feel free to spread the word. It'd be good to have some more people joining us to do this. If you need to catch up, it will be on YouTube later, along with all the others. If you wanna refine your single arm drill, I've also uploaded that drill so you can watch that at the same time, just so you can go through the, the technical aspects and really perfect that. So just nice and easy for the warm up. We're gonna get a little bit more, a little bit stronger later. Okay, remember we're pivoting early to set the forearm into an early vertical position. Obviously I'm standing up, so that becomes an early horizontal position. And it's about connecting the fingertips to the elbows, that one blade to send all the water down towards the feet, okay? Good work, everyone. Last 20 seconds, last 20 seconds. Then we're gonna ditch our cords. We're gonna ditch our cords. We've got one minute with our left arm, one minute with our right arm. I'm gonna add uh, a medium sort of dumbbell for this because I like a little bit of weight in the hand so that I can actually get a sense of a, a little more feel for the water in three, two, one. Fantastic, okay. Pick up your dumbbell. Remember, it's like Superman flying. The shoulder is high above the surface, okay? The shoulder is above the surface. This shoulder comes into the chin. We set our catch position, anchor that hand, and then we pull and connect the rotation, okay? We recover, drive the shoulder high. Shoulder starts high, comes low, pulls through. The legs and the hips are involved as you drive that back up above the surface. Here we go. Keep the head still for now. We've got plenty more of these to come. We can work on the breathing later. Okay, just over halfway. So if you are pulling on your stretch cords with the uh, body in a horizontal position, pivoted at the hips, this is gonna start to add a little bit of rotation. So it's not the end of the world. It's okay if you are pulling with the cords in a horizontal position in five, four, three, two, and one, swap sides please, one minute with the other arm. So start out in Superman flying, shoulder high, set the catch position and pull that shoulder through towards the chin. Imagine the legs and the hips are involved in driving that shoulder back up above the surface. So it starts high, finishes low, and recovers back up above the surface. Keep the head nice and still, the head must remain still. When we do come to add some breathing later, it's always in between the arm movements, always in between the arm movements. So remember, it's fingertips to elbows, set the catch position, make it horizontal as early as you can, connect the shoulder, couple the body all the way through so that you get that connection. Keep the head still, shoulder high, shoulder low. And it's about that early pivot to bring that into horizontal and then we drive it through. Good, in three, 
two, one, fantastic. Back on the long cords, back on the long cords, full stroke front crawl. Three minutes this time, only the three minutes. You'll spot a pattern soon enough. You'll spot a pattern, don't worry, there's always a pattern. In fact, let me let you know, let me <laughs> let you in on a secret. So it's, it was four minutes with the core, it's one minute left and right arm. We're on to the three now, then it'll be one minute left and right. I'm gonna mix up at certain points a different dumbbell so I get different training effects. Don't worry if you don't have a dumbbell or multiple weights, it's not the end of the world. So it's, it's kind of a four, three, two, one pattern of full stroke front crawl with a minute left and a minute right, single arms in between, in between, okay? If you're feeling warmed up, if you're feeling good, you could take the feet a few inches away from where the cords are tethered, whether you take a step back or you step down a step. If you're not warmed up, you can always come forwards a step. It's not the end of the world. I'd rather better technique was sustained Elbow pivoting early, keeping the head still, switching the shoulder from side to side. Think about that horizontal forearm position if you're standing up. Everything we worked on in the drill should come through into the full stroke, into the full stroke. And this is just the king of, or queen, of drills. It really is the one that brings all those elements together. The hips, the kick, the catch. If anything's missing, you will struggle, you really will, to make it work. And I like to do it without a snorkel. I like to do that drill without a snorkel because with a snorkel, I can keep the head still, the body stays flat, and I'm just kind of, you know, I can swing that arm through and I won't be punished in terms of a window for getting the air in. Last minute, everyone, last minute. Just be comfortable, use the tricep to push through and finish at the back of the stroke. Don't get lazy and exit early at the hips. Back, I'm gonna let you off a little bit because I remember you had a, a, an elbow and a shoulder injury, but I do wanna see you making, as best you can, that elbow pivoting to make that catch position. Don't push down with a straight arm. Remember, straight arm will lift you up, bounce you up to the surface rather than pull you forwards, okay? Do your best, do your best. I know you've got some complications there. Look after yourself, look after the body. Last 20 seconds, last 20 seconds. I'm vertical, I'm standing upright with the calls vertical, so I'm really getting the hips involved, which is allowing me to get that shoulder to come through and finish. Brush the cheek, brush the cheek. In five, four, three, two, one, fantastic. Back on the single arm, back on the single arms. Okay, here we go. So if the arm is in motion, the head is still. When we stop, we take a breath to the side. And if we've finished properly with that shoulder above the surface, there should be a nice window of opportunity to get the air in before that next stroke. Okay, get the breath in and go again. Set the catch position, anchor that hand, enables, enables me to pull the shoulder through under the chin, and then I breathe in between, breathe in between. So if I had the snorkel on, I'd literally be able to keep the shoulder without any movement, wind, windmill through, and obviously I'd get air, but without the snorkel, I'd get the feedback that this shoulder was low and it was being blocked. That's the beauty of performing this without the snorkel. In five, four, three, two, one. Other side, please, other arm. Here we go, one minute. Work on making the angles exact the speed exact, the trajectory the hand takes under the body exact. I'm literally trying to pull down the backbone so that I go forwards in a straight line. Keep it simple, you know, the years of S's and things, long gone, okay, so keep the hand under the body, keep narrow, I don't wanna be sort of recovering low and wide and sweeping all the way around, just stay whether either you've got a high elbow or you've got a straight arm recovery, you want to stay narrow, okay? It's up to you how the arm recovers. You know, both have merits. In three, two, and one. Good, 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 relax there, relax there. Pick up your cords, please. 
We've got two minutes, we've got two minutes. Take another step back if you can, just a fraction. We're not pulling ceiling tiles down, hopefully we're not. Okay, we've got two rounds of this, because if you've done the maths, if you've done the maths, and I know you'll have been thinking ahead, it is a 16 minute block of work. And we've got two rounds, what with a little recovery in the middle to take us up to our almost 35 minutes. And then that way we sneak under the Zoom limitation of the 40 minutes. Um, even though I've got these sort of hot, ugly little grippy things now, I am trying to open the hands a little bit more. It's taking some getting used to. If you've got a proper paddle for the uh, to hand attachment, fantastic. Don't forget to focus on the fingers opening a little bit. Not too wide, okay, but you know, a couple of millimeters is what we're looking for. All these little things will add up enabling you to anchor the hand more effectively under the body, pull the body forwards and over, a little bit like you would if you were running on the road compared to running on a treadmill. You want a reward for all that hard work of anchoring, setting that position, keeping streamlined, um, you know, you should travel forwards and over. If the hand is pushing down, if the fingers are too wide, if you drop the elbow, all those things are gonna add up and have the hand slip under the body and not enable you to move forwards as effectively as you might. Okay. We're coming out in 20 seconds. We're coming out in 20 seconds. We've got one more set of the single arms. Then we've got a little bit of pure rotation work as an active recovery. We'll have a little drink and then we'll get going on round two, round two. Don't let up just because we're near the end. Keep pushing through. Use the triceps to finish at the back of the stroke in three, two, one. Wonderful stuff. Back on the dumbbells. Back on the dumbbells, please. Okay. So to make this more effective in the water, we often do this with paddles just to accentuate the hand shape and size, just to enable us to hold a little bit more water here with that big paddle on, enabling you to pull the shoulder through. We might do a length with the left arm, a length with the right arm, and I like to see this drill flow into the full stroke urgently so that the benefits are there. With the hand in its normal position, without a paddle, obviously that's good, but there are times when you want to make this a little bit harder as well, and that's when a fist clenched will be very useful because then it will really expose uh, any deficiencies, it will encourage you to pivot even earlier, incorporate the forearm, and then really make the drill work harder. Three, two, one, fantastic. Over to the other side, please, over to the other side. Remember, start in Superman, keep the head still, chin points to the bottom of the pool, close down the surface area. First thing, pivot, turn that to horizontal. Now you're connecting that rotation, Keep the hand pulling down the center line. Recover narrow, whether it's with a high elbow in this position or whether it's a high elbow uh, or high hand in a straight arm recovery. You know, it's up to you, but keep it narrow. What we don't want is sort of things traveling wide and causing problems like so. Last 20 seconds, let's get a few more in please. And obviously same applies. If the arm's in motion, keep the head still, breathe away when the hand stops moving. Good work, everyone. In five, four, three, two, one. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, one minute easy chords, one minute easy chords. Here we go. Just feel the drill coming through, shaping the movement, getting the hips involved, even if the body's horizontal. Let the hips wiggle a little bit. Think about your streamline, think about reducing any surface area that might be exposed as best you can. You know, if you just finish the stroke here, finish the stroke here, finish it, all of this is open. You've got to work harder to have that move through the water. Okay, so just switch the shoulders from side to side. Remember the torpedo drill. Okay, that's the basic one that enables us to finish close in, rotate nicely from side to side. 
I do wish my stairwell were a little bit wider. My elbows are really taking a beating. Last three, two, one, fantastic. Okay, stop there. Have a drink, shake the arms out. Work on your rotation a little bit just to get the breathing under control, just nice and relaxed. Make sure the hips are moving, but the head is still. Okay, good work, good work. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to a different pair of dumbbells now, just to kind of give me that um, sense of different amounts of pressure on the hand. I think the dumbbell's nice for these drills because it keeps, gives you, uh, rather than just doing it with your hand alone, uh, obviously, the dumbbell encourages you to slow things down and be a little bit more accurate. Feel like you've got the water, you know, the, under your hand. There's benefits there. So I've got to switch to a lighter pair now. So I'm going to have, even though the shoulders are getting a little bit tired, I'm going to have to concentrate and work a little bit harder on those same accurate movements. So I've got, um, what is this? This is like 1.5 kilo and this is 0.5. And it just helps with different sort of speeds of the hand for the drill. Okay, we're back to the four minutes, back to the four minutes with the long cords. Are we ready? Hopefully we're nicely warmed up now. We could maybe take a step backwards. Okay, take a step down. And here we go, four minutes please, four minutes. So, work the back of the stroke, use the tricep to finish beyond the hips, don't get lazy and exit at the hips. Remember, we're switching the shoulders from side to side. The legs are kicking. Imagine it, imagine them. Toes pointed, nice streamline, nothing too big. The legs are kicking behind the body, not being exposed. The hips are shifting from side to side. That enables this length to finish. Start my catch so much earlier. Finish the push at the back so much longer. Okay. If I stay flat through the shoulders, all of this becomes diminished. It's not as long, not as effective. The shoulders stay low, then it becomes a problem to get the breath in. If you switch the shoulders from side to side, you'll get more of an opportunity by lifting this to just follow that and get a nice fluid breath behind. Talking of breathing, let's try that now, let's try that now. So let's go three to the right. Here's one, two, three. Then I'm gonna take my three strokes to switch across to the other side three to the left, and then my three strokes will take me across to the other side. And this is a nice rhythm, keeps a lot of air coming in. You know, if you just bilateral breathe every third stroke, that's a, a big difference when you're trying to make the breakthrough. When you're trying to switch from breathing every second to every third, so that you get the benefits of bilateral breathing, you get the symmetry. It's a lot less air per length, but if you soften that ratio by, you know, breathing every second stroke to one side for three, and then you take those three strokes to get you across to the other side, you're kind of still interrupting the bad habits. You're not letting one dominant side take over. You're still getting things mixed up. You're encouraging the symmetry of the stroke. It should help you stay swimming straight in open water when you haven't got all the straight lines to help balance you and, and keep you on track. And then if that works, you sight less often, you stay flatter in terms of the you know, fingertips through the elbow to the shoulders, to the hips, to the feet. If we were looking at you sideways on under the water in that sort of frozen position here, I would want to see a nice straight line all the way through. If the head's not bobbing up excessively, the hips will stay higher and you will stay faster. Last minute, last minute everyone, keep pushing, don't slack off now. If the technique is starting to fade, take a step forwards, it's okay. I'd rather the better technique lasted for the four minutes rather than ripping and hurrying, speeding the stroke up, which will limit your ability to get any air. Think as a swimmer would, don't think you know, trying to, you can't beat the stroke with strength and power. You've got to retain that technique in order to give you that long window to get the air in, keep the breathing happening, keep the stroke long. Last 30 seconds. Just one more round of breathing, three to the right. Even though I'm breathing, I'm still focused on that pivot. 
out of the elbow, okay? If I start to lose that and push down to help stabilize the breathing, I'm just gonna bounce along, bounce along, lift the head, sink the legs, and impact my body position in a, not a great way. Last three, two, one. Good stuff, everyone, good stuff. Here we go. Single arm, please, single arm. I've got my lighter dumbbells now, so I have to focus on my accuracy because I haven't quite got as much weight in them. I haven't got the feel for the water quite so well. Okay, remember shoulder starts high. Connect the catch, pull the shoulder through to the chin, let the hip follow. The hip has to move. It's very, it's highly unlikely you can sort of do this without the hips moving. The shoulder just hasn't got that, that movement for most people, okay? So remember, arm stops, breathe to the side. And if you're struggling, it's probably that shoulder that hasn't finished its rotation and is blocking. Good work, everyone. Last 10 seconds, last 10 seconds. Three, two, one, good stuff, good stuff. Remember, this drill is demonstrated on YouTube where you can find this, just search for Swim for Try on YouTube. You'll find our channel and there's a bunch of drills being uploaded. There's a bunch of these sessions. If ever you can't make the Wednesday or the Friday, you can get something done in your own time. Breathe in between. If you need more, the, you can listen to our new podcast. I've been speaking to various Olympians, various coaches, various physios, various uh, Claire's, Dr. Claire was a sports psychiatrist. She was very interesting with some ideas on how to cope with lockdown. Steve True, I've known for a long time, did a nice podcast on um, training principles and his journey through as a competitor from the 80s. Uh, who else did we speak to? Oh, Micah, who you might remember, came to La Santa with us in January, the Swiss nutritionist, did a really nice job speaking to her about cramping and what you can do to avoid that. Good work, everyone. Single arm finish back on the long cords. We've got three minutes. We've got three minutes. We're switching from side to side. We're pulling through, but without losing that technique. Elbow pivots, turn the forearm into a horizontal position nice and early. Some people refer to this as pulling yourself over a barrel. It's kind of a, one of those classic textbook things. Um, it used to confuse me until I realized my barrel was standing up and not on its side. So be careful with all of these visuals and analogies. Um, you know, sometimes they can be helpful, sometimes not so much. We've got three minutes now, we've got three minutes. I'm gonna switch over to opening my hands so I can think about my, Fingertip to elbow position all the way through. I might take a step back, nicely warmed up now. I can see my fingers now, which is better um, for me to just concentrate on that all the way through the technique. Two minutes to go, two minutes to go. Can't see the hands at the back of the stroke, but remember, try to think that the reason we like the hips shifting from side to side while we're doing these calls, they're actually moving out of the way, so the hand can stay central for a lot longer, okay? You, the hip will roll out of the way. You can just kind of see it there. You know, don't go around the hip, because that's gonna throw you off balance and cause you to wiggle down, well, the lane, the, the river, where, wherever you might be swimming. And let's hope it's not too far off. Um, Tracy, you asked me about swimming outside. Um, I think it's, it's a, it was a little confusing. You know, if you're a purist and you're worried about safety um, and your immediate family member isn't a lifeguard or, you know, you might be a bit nervous about swimming in a river or a lake. I don't think we can open stubbers yet, even though we could create two meters of social distancing, um, because obviously there'd be a lot more than our family there. So we're gonna wait a couple more weeks, uh, unless something rapidly changes. But I think on your own, if you could find somewhere safe with family members, it's just frustrating because obviously you go to the park and it, you're a solo runner, you know, you're not, you're partaking in a solo sport, whereas swimming around a lake is a solo, you know, there's not that much difference, providing 
um, you know, social distances and getting changed and getting registered and all those things can be applied, which I know we could, we've been working on new risk assessments for a while now. But anyway, particle political broadcast over. We've got five, four, three, two, wonderful stuff. Back onto the dumbbells, back onto the dumbbells. We're nearly done, guys. We're nearly done. Single arm for a minute with one arm. Now we're getting a little bit tired. You've really got to focus on connecting, concentrating, keeping the technique there, even though the body is telling you, let's have a rest. Work on connecting that catch to the rotation. Remember the kick at this point and the, the hips would need to really be engaged to help you recover that through and then drive you back into the streamlined. Good work. Last 20 seconds with the one arm. And stretch it back out. Start in Superman. Hands as far apart as possible. Okay, from here. Set the catch to, into a horizontal position. Drive the shoulder through. And then I am recovering with that shoulder and arm above the surface. This gives me that little bit of surface work that the stretch cords obviously don't. Okay. Cross to the other arm, please. Cross to the other arm. Good work, everyone. Good, good, good. Okay, good concentration, focus now. Just need to keep on top of this. The minute you start thinking about what's for lunch, we're gonna get go back to flat and just kind of flap through that. Okay, so concentrate. So remind yourselves of the teaching points of this drill. Fingertips to elbow, catch, hold that position. That should bring the shoulder through. That takes the hip above the surface or close to it. Nice and high with the recovery above the surface here. Nice and narrow. And then drive the shoulder back up above so I can get that air to the side. Last three, two, one, good job. Last bit now, back onto the cords for two minutes. Back onto the cords. Can we take another step back, another step back? Even if it's just a couple of centimeters, but don't let the technique fade as a result of that. It's going to be interesting that we're going to be able to swim in the lake before we can swim it in the swimming pools. I was uh, involved in a conference call last week, the Outdoor Summer Magazine put together for some sort of industry people. And um, the pools are, you know, very confused and it's quite complicated that, you know, they're going to have to reshuffle changing rooms to enable social dis distancing. They're wondering if they'll be able to offer showering facilities where the people will arrive kind of in their stuff quickly get changed swim and then head home for their showers there there and obviously a lot of swimming pools the changing rooms are just you know especially um, the communal ones maybe the cubicles will make life easier but you know if you've got a, a room you know you know how it is you're often shoulder to shoulder bunched up it's going to be very tricky so it'd be quite weird to be in open water before the pools. Quite nice. Good work, everyone. Good, good, good. Last 20 seconds, last 20 seconds. Don't let it fade. Keep pushing through. Finish at the back, finish at the back. Head still. Switching from side to side. Keep the hand pulling central down the backbone. Finish through as the hip rolls out of the way. Last five, four, three, two, one good job okay i'm gonna try this last one without any weights now in the hand okay um just so i really have to concentrate and focus on where that's pulling through even to the point that i'm focusing on the wrist pivot at the back of the stroke so i'm finishing with the palm facing the wall for as long as possible before it kind of just relaxes and then comes back through okay so one minute with the one arm keep it controlled Keep the stroke narrow. As soon as the arm stops moving, get the breath in to the side. That's nice, everyone. 
last 20 seconds. So keep it narrow in here, whether you are high elbow or straight arm, has to be here and then pull through. And the shoulder starts high, finishes low, finishes high. Catch, hold, anchor that, pull that through, get the body coupled, make that a connection. And onto the other side, please. Keep the head still, get the breath in between when that shoulder has given you the clearance to go into it, okay? You can breathe more than once, you know, get your focus, get your composure, and then go again. There's no right or wrong in terms of that. You know, it's a tricky drill. And the, it, you know, there's a reason that it's tricky because it, it involves so many elements of the full stroke, which is great. And we often default to this drill because, you know, in terms of value for money, it's really, really good. You know, it works the arms, works the hips, works the legs. There's not many drills that, that focus and need all of those components coming together for it to do well. But it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's literally, I'm doing full stroke front crawl with one arm not moving. So it, it makes sense that everything is in place. Three, two, one, fantastic. Well done, everyone. Um, oh, we've got a minute easy on the court. I nearly forgot. Actually, let's do something a little bit different. If you've got your dumbbells, Let's just do a little bit more surface work now. Bend over at the hips, don't worry about your cords. Just to work the muscles of the back a little bit. Keeping narrow. I think I hear the family coming back from the park. They're trying to be quiet, but that's gonna be impossible. Last minute, last 20, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Keep it narrow. Good work, don't forget your catch. Pivot with the elbow, send the water back. Keep the head still unless you are turning to breathe. Good to just fatigue the shoulders now. Hard, isn't it? Even with these half kilos, just the muscles through the back, lifting, lifting, recovering. Good work, everyone. Three, two, one. Oh, wonderful stuff. Just.